Okay, so let's see if we can get this to work. I'm trying this a new way, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so this is uh, class 27. This is uh, Ohm's Law Lab wrap up. So hopefully you were able to attend the live class and then this will be more help or if you couldn't, then this is that. Uh, make sure you do a good job on this lab because it could be 25 to 30% of your quarter four grade. Uh, we're kind of thinking about what to do about the categories at this time. So I would just make sure that you have um, your best effort on this, okay? So this is part one. So um, just to make sure you understood what the simulation was telling you, okay? So when you had uh, the simulation, oh, I can make this skinnier. All right, you're gonna have these little circles here. You had the resistor whatever okay all right and then um hopefully you noticed if you set this to be 10 volts okay hopefully you saw right that these circles said 10 and these said zero okay so what is inside this circle is telling you the voltage all right so as you see here uh up this whole part above the resistor these are all going to read 10 right? Remember voltage is kind of related to the energy. Okay. So, um, remember up here, it's like the little guys have that full cup of water. Okay. They come around, they dump out to the light bulb and then they're empty at zero volts. Okay. So the battery, the negative side of the battery is always going to be zero volts. The positive side of the battery is whatever the voltage is. Okay. Um, so again, voltage is not energy exactly but it's very related it's kind of complicated so for our purposes in freshman physics we're going to assume it's sort of like the energy it's sort of like that pressure that pumping um, action okay uh, current this is what we had been previously calling charge flow okay uh, which means the same thing it's the charges moving around so you had your battery and then hopefully somewhere in the circuit right you set your um, ammeter okay and an ammeter measures current Okay, so current um, has a symbol of I, okay, and a units of A for amperes or amps. All right, so hopefully, um, I don't know if you got that somewhere else. Okay, so since uh, the ammeter has to read the current flow, all right, it means that it needs to be hooked as part of the circuit. Okay, so that the charges actually would go through the ammeter in order to uh, move around the circuit. So it might say like one amp or something in here, okay? And for now, we're just doing one simple loop, so all the ammeter should read the same thing, okay? So the ammeter reads the current, it's in actually in the circuit, okay? Uh, one more thing up here, voltage symbol is capital V, and the units are volts, which is also a capital V, which is kind of confusing. So that's that, okay? Current. Symbol is I, units A for amps, okay? All right, uh, resistor, I'm not sure if this was in one of the readings or something else, okay? Um, but a resistor is something that hinders the charge flow, okay? A resistor hinders the charge flow, all right? And it makes it more difficult uh, for the, to go. It's measured in resistance, Okay, which would be a unit of R, I mean, sorry, a symbol of R, and the units are called ohms, which is hence Ohm's Law Lab, and it's this symbol, which is a capital omega in the Greek uh, letters, okay? So resistance is measured in ohms, all right? So um, a resistor is something that hinders the charge flow but doesn't stop it, like an insulator would actually stop the charge flow, okay? But a resistor just sort of makes the charge flow less. Remember, it's not really slower, it's just less charges are able to get through, okay? All right, so in the first part, hopefully you uh, had this. Hopefully you kept your resistance constant. I think I told you 10 ohms was a good thing to keep, whatever I said in the thing. Uh, and you change your voltages, okay, and you measured the current. Okay, this was your battery voltage and the current was from the ammeter. All right, and then you should have gotten a graph like this. Remember this little button right here? If you click that, that will make the, the graph a little more spread out. Okay, this is a little bit of a kind of a shallow graph, okay? Uh, your slope, hopefully, if you set your resistance to be 10, like I said, uh, your slope should have been 0.1. Okay, if you had a different resistance, you're going to have a different slope, which is fine. Okay, things to think about your graph. Make sure you have uh, your voltage in volts. Here you have your current in amps. 
okay? Make sure you have units and labels and make sure you have a trend line, okay? Which should be either linear, y equals mx plus b, or if you want to use y is proportional to kx1, right? That would be a direct relationship because it should go through zero, zero, okay? So just double check everything on your graph before you turn it in, okay? Um, for the boxes, I don't think that it had these things in there, so you might want to add them in, all right? So the graph is linear or direct, right? Because remember when it goes through zero, zero, then it's direct. Okay, your Desmos equation, y1 squiggle kx1, okay? Or if you wanted to use y1 mx1 plus b, that's okay, but the b should be zero anyway, okay? So you can just leave that off if you want. Okay, an algebra equation, right? That's just going to be equal, all right? And then the actual equation uh, is a little bit confusing, okay? So the y variable was current equals this thing here is your slope, Okay, um, and I just use the units of amps over volts, right? Because that's the rise over run, amps per volt uh, times the voltage. Okay, we'll come back to this one in a minute. Okay, and we'll come back to this one in a minute. Okay, so this is kind of your equation. So your relationship between the variables, when the voltage increases, the current increases. All right, and what you want to talk about in your CER basically is when there's more push, right? That's the voltage, when there's more push, more charges are flowing. So that means an increased voltage would mean an increased current, right? Which makes sense, right? If the battery's pumping and pushing harder, more charges are gonna be able to move around, which would increase the current, okay? All right, explaining that slope the way it's written, right? For every one volt, right? Because if it's 0.01 amps per volt, for every one volt added to the voltage, the current increases by 0.1 amps, right? The harder I push, the more charges can flow. Okay. All right. So this is kind of a weird unit, but if you notice, right, point one, this is a little bit confusing. Okay. You're just going to have to believe me. Okay. Um, point one is the same as one tenth, right? So really what this slope is telling you is one over the resistance, right? Because it was one over 10 ohms. So see, that's where your 10 was. Okay, so really when we look at this, this um, slope here is actually the inverse of resistance, okay, which gives us the equation current equals voltage over resistance. That's what we call Ohm's law, okay? Current is directly proportional to the voltage, right? More push means more current and inversely proportional to the resistance. More resistance, less current, that'll be part two, okay? So that's the equation that you're going to be using. You can see it down here. In the prediction example, right, remember you're going to choose a voltage, okay, and then you're going to have I equals V over R. So if I had 5 volts, my resistance was 10 ohms, then that would give me a current of 0.5 amps, okay? All right, so for quantitative relationship, just explain it this way, right, more voltage added by 1 volt, the current increases by 0.1. And then the slope actually is the inverse of resistance, okay, which is a little bit confusing. It's basically like 1 over 10 ohms, okay, which is a touch confusing, okay? I think I'm going to do the CER, yeah, I'm going to do the CER in the next video because I'm trying this new screencast thing and I'm not sure it's going to work. So before I do the whole thing, let me just break it into pieces, okay? All right, so hopefully that uh, graph stuff makes sense. You're welcome to email me. Uh, with questions, I can hop on an office hour for you. Uh, hopefully you attended this live and then this was like your second go around at it, which probably made it a little bit easier. Okay.